Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is June 14th, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. You can see Alaska, Hawaii down here. Here's the Pacific Ocean, BC, Washington, Oregon. We've got this ridge protecting us for a couple more days, and we're going to get this energy to ride over the top and flatten this ridge and eventually open a deep trough here across Pacific Northwest. If you take a look all the way out across Pacific Ocean, there is a storm developing out there. It's going to help to really build this ridge across some of the Pacific Ocean here, and that's going to allow, in turn, that trough to drop down down over the west coast of North America. We'll take a look at that in the weather models here in a moment. And if you guys want a nice affordable home weather station, check this one out. Click down below, 10% off, all solar powered, all wireless. This is my home station. Build your own custom forecast for you automatically. And the winds update real time here as we're just kind of watching it. Highly recommend this weather station. Anyway, Father's Day weekend, National Weather Service Spokane. Check it out. Look at these temperatures just dropping down as this next trough arrives by the time we get towards Sunday. So here we go, folks. Kind of some unusual weather here coming for June. This is breezy to windy with low moderate relative humidities today. So we're pretty dry out there and the wind gusting around can create some fires rapidly and they can grow pretty quickly out there. So just a heads up for that fire danger. This is looking at the entire planet here. This is the tropical areas here, the blues. The pink kind of uh, shows you where the mid-latitude cyclones develop here. And you can see the grays across the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere here, kind of showing where the colder air is across some of the polar regions. So you put that into motion and you can see why they call this the mid-latitude cyclones and why they, you know, why they're named that mid-latitude cyclone there. It's the boundary there between that polar air and that tropical air. If I put that into motion, you can kind of see these waves bouncing around both hemisphere there here, uh, both hemispheres, and these are known as Rossby waves here. So kind of interesting to kind of just watch the entire global pattern here. We're looking at about 18,000 feet temperature, and you can see our trough arriving here for the Pacific Northwest. We got North America right here, and you got South America there. There's Africa, Asia's way over here, and you can see the big ridge out over the Pacific here, allowing that trough to open up across the Pacific Northwest. This is looking at another view of that here, but we're zoomed in a bit more here on the Pacific Ocean. There's Hawaii, there's Washington, Alaska here, and you can see this energy out here across some of the Western Pacific, and we put that into motion, and you can see this strong storm develop here on the leading edge of some of that warmer air. And as we continue to scroll out a bit here, you can see this warm air move up across from the Pacific Ocean here. And that's what's building that ridge. And you can see in turn that trough really gets a chance to drive down across Pacific Northwest. So some pretty chilly air coming. And we're gonna have multiple chances for some precipitation across the region, especially across the higher terrain. This is looking at 500 millibar temperatures. You can see the trough that kind of brought those breezy conditions yesterday. And a little bit of a ridge here. We're gonna bounce back in the temperatures a bit here, but then you'll see this next act activity is this very cold air at 18,000 feet really drops down. Look at this nicely carved trough just kind of spinning right over the Pacific Northwest. Very chilly temperatures aloft there. So probably going to have all kinds of crazy weather here coming up. Some gusty winds, some precipitation, some thunderstorms. And yeah, hopefully you can squelch some of this forest fire potential we've got going on here across the region as well. This is looking at yesterday afternoon's European run, six hour precipitation and sea level pressure. So we scroll through Thursday. You can kind of see a weak system trying to get down here as we go on in towards the weekend. And then you can see more precipitation chances arrive. Kind of a convergence zone signature at times there across some of western Washington. Frontal system driving down across Idaho, Montana. Look at all this precip across BC. Some of it showing up as snowfall for the higher terrain. The Cascades, British Columbia, up towards Alberta there is across some of the Rocky Mountains. And you can kind of see this trough spin to bring additional precipitation chances as we go on in through next week coming up here. <clears throat> So anyway, looking at the GFS ensemble mean, this was uh, the 060. This is last night's run, and this is just an average of all the GFS ensemble runs here. So you can see the precipitation start to arrive as we go through the weekend here across some of the areas. Look at the Rocky Mountains and some areas north of Vancouver Island along the coastal regions there. And then the Cascades starting to get involved in some of that heavier precipitation as well. So this is good news uh, as far as trying to keep things a little bit, you know, trying to moisten things up a bit here. So the fire season isn't quite as severe and you can see Seattle I mean look at that you're approaching an inch by the time you get out towards June 27th here and some big amounts showing up across the Cascades even across some of the Rockies Idaho Panhandle and big amounts really over some of the Rockies Alberta BC and up north of Vancouver Island as well so yeah interesting systems here rolling in and we'll try to mark these day by day we still have a couple days to go before this trough arrives now here's looking at the GFS ensemble mean as of last night this is the wider view Alaska BC Washington Washington. There goes that trough that brought the breezy conditions. Ridge trying to protect us a bit here, but you see how it flattens 
comes out and then this trough just really this bowling ball just takes aim here at the Pacific Northwest as we go through the weekend on into early next week and as we scroll out into the extended look at this troughing just kind of remain across western portions of the USA and as we go out 200 plus hours you're going to have a pretty stark signal here for some troughing right off the Pacific Northwest and much of the west coast of North America so interesting signal here it would be fun to watch this and see how this evolves in the forecast coming up this is the national blend of models you can see Seattle maybe up into the mid upper 60s here maybe some 70s for some of the Willamette Valley and then we you know it's Thursday is not too bad Friday maybe a little bit above average or right about average here for Seattle but look at some of the Willamette Valley into the 80s here maybe a 90 degree reading there for some of eastern Washington and then that trough starts to bring itself down across the region look by Sunday 62 really cooling things down here across some of the Pacific Northwest look at Tuesday's high only 61 for Seattle there and then we potentially bounce back in the wake of that but there's pretty low uh forecast confidence looking out this far for now but we've got pretty good confidence in this trough's arrival and some pretty chilly temperatures coming late this weekend and on in through next week at times this is that six to ten day temperature probability outlook look at the bullseye just includes much of the pacific northwest this include bc alberta as well and this is the six to ten day precipitation outlook issued yesterday here an above average signal across much of the region and this is looking at that developing el nino here so you can see as we scroll day by day we're now into may and you can really see that warm tongue extend across the equatorial pacific there very warm temperatures there off the coast of south america but you can see as we we're march 16th we still had a lot of blues here across the central pacific ocean here since been replaced by the much warmer temperatures a sign of the developing el nino coming up we are at 0 0.9 so we are already almost to moderate el nino territory there at least the initial conditions it's not officially an el nino until it averages that out for three months here but you can clearly see the climb out of the la nina conditions towards briefly neutral and now we are into el nino conditions and look at the nino 1.2 right up against the coastline very warm water already there this is looking at the probabilities i mean it's virtually 100 percent at this point we are almost certainly headed towards that el nino just the tiniest chance that we stay into neutral territory and you can see basically zero chance of a la nina for this fall and winter and on in through the early next year coming up this is looking at the cfs you can kind of see the climb out here the model's been doing pretty good and you can see we are likely headed towards a strong el nino greater than 1.5 celsius and you can see that here's uh this is july august september october november December and January. Look at this impressive warm tongue across the area here. I have done an educational video on what to expect for El Nino conditions here in the Pacific Northwest. So check that video out if you like and i may update that you know we'll see how we go we'll check out some of the patterns that are developing during this el nino as we go into the fall and winter as well and of course with that el nino advisory you know you probably heard about that on the social media already but yeah anyway a couple of days not too bad here before that trough really starts to get going down here across saturday and then into sunday and early next week that should, thing should be full-fledged trough activity here across pacific northwest with multiple systems associated with it and we'll continue to watch those systems as we get closer to it we'll try to pinpoint some of the precipitation possibilities across the area and thunderstorm potential and even some higher elevation snowfall so anyway yeah keep clicking like leave some comments you know let's uh let's do this again tomorrow and i'll talk to you guys then